This is day three, update one. It's rather a late update because we cracked straight on from early doors today. The Germans do like starting their days early. Uh, we have spent all day at Flex. It has been blooming awesome. We've been going around machines. We've talked to some very clever engineering people. We got our geek on when it came to lithium, which was a giggle. As you can see in this uh, Kia's leaving, that is uh, our Flex UK man, Rich and Ian, our features editor as well, disappearing off to the hotel because they really needed a pint and it was desperate. Uh, he was crossing his leg legs so much. Um, and then leaving Matt and I, as per normal, to do all the work, loading in the uh, gimbal kit that he's got here. As you can tell, Betty is still going absolutely fine. Um, and we are going to be heading back to the hotel um, where we plan to sink the odd pint or two before Please. setting off. <laughs> Definitely needed. Have you enjoyed today, Matthew? Yes, it's been good. Uh, but I'm still learning so much about machines. I don't need to know. Yeah, I but don't, don't, don't. my brain doesn't take it. No, that is that is true. Um, but anyway, we will set off and we will do another little update soon. We are in the final leg of our adventure. Uh, we had a very early start this morning. Uh, young Matthew met up with some drifting pals, all very trendy people who like to burn tires and go sideways and, and generally probably get an awful lot of sex. Um, and uh, so he was out drinking and being wild. Now he can just about hold the camera, um, although he's swaying a bit. Um, so since 2 a.m. UK time, I've been hitting the road um, and we've had lots of suicidal Czechoslovakian truck drivers and stuff, but we've got some big news. Uh, first big news is Betty made it to 125 on the sat nav, 125 miles an hour, hence sports saloon. Uh, pretty impressive for a car uh, that is 20 years old. There was a bit of puff of smoke and stuff, but we couldn't see it because it was dark. It's the same principle of me taking the uh, engine warning bulb out of the dashboard, therefore we've had no engine warning lights. Um, and we're also just about to hit another milestone. Uh, this car uh, has done 129,998 miles. So I need to find something to say for approximately a mile and a half so that we can cross the border and do it on film, which is fun. So I'd like to take a moment to explain what driving in Europe is, is like. Um, and bear in mind, I'm, I'm a proactive driver. I like to sort of uh, concentrate on what I'm doing, even though I'm looking at the camera and stuff. And it's interesting, the different driving techniques. I have to admit, the Germans are better drivers. Ooh, 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 12999. Uh, the Germans are better drivers than the Brits, I'm afraid. They've got better lane discipline. They like to use their indicator. Um, and um, I don't know uh, how many people have actually done the autobahns, but there's something quite intimidating about driving at full speed. There are no speed limits, so I presume uh, that the, the job one should do is drive at, at, at full speed. Um, and it's, it's really quite unnerving because it's dual carriageways rather than three carriageways most of the way. Um, and doing that at, at 125 in a car with 50 section tires is uh, wobbly. But anyway, we are about to hit 129, well, about 130,000. And we've just been through Luxembourg and we're now in Belgium, so we're all being very law abiding and boom. 130,000 miles, which I know for a diesel isn't much, but for a 500 quid, two and a half litre Subaru, and the two and a half litre is not massively reliable, um, it's, it's, it's pretty good going. So now uh, we have 408 miles of this 760 mile journey today um, left to do, and we're gonna try and get ferry, and we're having a little Top Gear challenge as well. Uh, Ian Seeley, uh, who was with us yesterday, uh, is taking the plane back because he can't you know, cope with driving and um, he, I believe his flight's about 9, 9.30. Uh, this is German time, so he will then get in at 10.30, 11.30 to Heathrow, which goes back to 10.30, and then it's about two hours Heathrow to, to Sirencester. Anyway, long story short, he'll be back around 12.30. Our sat-nav currently says 12.08. Uh, we've got to wait for channels, we've got to wait for traffic, we've got to do Brussels. Um, but there is an outside chance we might beat a Boeing 737-400 series in a Subaru, which is really my aim of the day. So uh, anyway, this uh, trip is probably one of the ultimate, the, well, the final update, shall we say. Um, and uh, if anything interesting happens, we shall be sure to report it when safe and legal to do so. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed watching our European special. As you can probably tell, it was an awful lot of fun putting it all together and filming it. Um, and we've spent many hours at the editors as well to try and make it sort of a little more palatable. Um, after the last video you saw, we carried on um, after a little detour accidentally into Luxembourg. We carried on into Brussels and then got stuck for the best part of three hours in traffic with uh, young Matthew driving. Um, and then we hit the channel and uh, we managed to get through immigration smoothly. They didn't do uh, a full body search on Matt, despite my request. Um, but then we got into Kenton and got home in good time. And I bet you're all wondering 
or some of you are wondering, if you've been listening, um, who won the test between the Boeing 737-400 series and the Subaru Legacy 2.5 litre GX. Well, I hate to break it to you. This is a picture of editor or oh, sub-editor Ian um, looking a little bit smug outside my, my, little, my little house, um, proving that he got there approximately 30 minutes before we did. But given that he started considerably later and was cheating using an aeroplane and hire cars, um, I think it's a moral victory for us. Um, and on that slightly delicate point, um, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. 